Hey friends, welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla. And I'm Aletha. So today I'm so excited to be here spending some time with her and hanging out and learning about spinning and just everything that she does. She's going to teach us a lot today. So you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Aletha and I am a fiber artist and fiber farmer. Um, I live in Louisiana and I raise Angora rabbits, which are a long-haired fiber rabbit. Um, they grow long, super soft fur, and it get, they get sheared just like sheep. And you can use the fiber to make yarn. And it is super fun. I also do some natural dyeing. Um, and I work with lots of other fibers too, like wool or cotton or um, bamboo, whatever. Wow. <laughs> that is just so amazing. So what is this that you're doing right here? So this is my drop spindle. It's a little, like a dowel with a disc and a hook on top. And it's a really ancient tool that humans have been using for thousands of years to spin all of their yarn and thread and string <clears throat> with whatever fiber was available to them. And it's just the, the way that yarn is made is literally by twisting fiber together. So I just kind of flick it and twist it like that. And the twist is traveling upward so I'm kind of pulling down a little at a time this wool in my hand. So this in your hand is like the fiber battings that you make. Mm -hmm. And then, so this is creating yarn. Yep, I'm making wow. yarn right now. Yeah, and see right now it's a single ply, but if I want to make two ply, I would make two batches basically and then twist them together. Oh. And see, I'm making like a bulky yarn. Oh, yeah. I guess. Can't really see it, but. <laughs> but we'll, you can we'll make any. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you can make a two ply, three ply, single ply. You can make any color, any blend of colors, blends of fibers. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> so, did you dye this? No, this was hand dyed by somebody else, a okay. different fiber artist, and I bought it from her. Oh, okay. Wow. So how long have you been spinning yarn? I've only been spinning for about two and a half years. It was my pandemic hobby that I picked up. <laughs> um, I was knitting off and on before that, and I just had a, a lot of love for natural fibers and animals and plants. And so when I found out about spinning, it kind of just combines all those things, and I fell in love with it. That is just so cool. That is. It's like mesmerizing. Yeah, that's the <laughs> other thing. It's like addictive and soothing. It's like a stimming kind of thing. It's really, really fun. <laughs> so where did you get this drop spindle? Um, I think I bought my first drop spindle on the Woolery, Woolery.com. You can buy them at fiber art stores. Sometimes like local yarn shops will sell them. I actually sell them too on my website. Oh, do you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I sell like a beginner's kit that has some wool and a drop spindle. But they're they're a good inexpensive way to get into the hobby. So what happens if you pull that too much and it tears off? If it breaks? It's really easy to fix. So if you keep your end fluffy, mm -hmm. and then you can easily attach it to another fluffy part by just pinching them together and adding your twist, and it will just magically oh, wow. join. Like it was magic. <laughs> it's really like magic. <laughs> I didn't even see a join. It yeah, just it was just... all of a sudden one piece again. <laughs> Wool is really fun to spin because it grabs onto itself really easily. No, this is wool that you're mm -hmm. doing here. Okay, so I stay away from wools because I think I live in Louisiana. Wool is too hot. Yeah. But someone did mention that wool was a 
natural fiber and it warms when it needs to and cools when it needs to. Is that, it, is that what I you I think mind? it's true. It's very breathable and it is temperature regulating. Yeah, um, that's what someone had said. Yeah, and I do think cotton is, it. cotton just feels cooler on your body. So it's hard to compare it to cotton. But the nice thing about wool is that it holds its shape really well. So that makes it really good for oh. socks. So it doesn't sweaters. stretch as much. Right. It doesn't I mean, get baggy. Yeah. <clears throat> That's one of its really, um, one of its superpowers, I guess. <laughs> so you learned to do this after you had moved to Louisiana. Right. Did you um, have rabbits before y'all moved to Louisiana? Or? I had one as a kid, but other uh -huh. than that, no. So when did you, when did you get rabbits? Uh, about the same time, like I learned how to spin and I was like, I need a fiber animal. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I got the rabbits because they're small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't have any experience with large livestock. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. So, um, can we learn about the process or do you have any projects or? you know, that you made with oh, this. Yes. That's, that would be cool to see. Okay. This is an Angora hand spun beret. Oh my Angora is really floppy and drapey, so I thought it'd be a perfect beret. And that is so sweet. soft. <laughs> oh, and it's so cute <laughs> on you. Goodness. But yeah, Angora is extremely soft and it has this fuzzy look to it. That's really unique to Angora. Nice if I can hold it up a little close so they can see that buzz. That is so super soft. Now it doesn't really have like, um, like it doesn't hold shape because it is so drapey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that is so soft. <laughs> I don't think I've ever felt a yarn that soft. It is one of the softest fibers ever. Okay, this one, I did not make this, but I just wanted to show an example of hand spun. I don't know if it's hand spun, but it could have been mohair, lace mohair that's been knitted into this, like, cobweb shawl. I so love it delicate so delicate looking. Yeah, I did not make this again, but... <laughs> so this, this is knitted? Yeah, and it's mohair. It's a single ply strand of lace weight mohair and mohair also has that fuzzy sort of texture and it just looks so frothy <laughs> now have you you actually wear this mm -hmm. i mostly like kind of bunch it up around my neck i don't wear it like loose because it'll snag on something <laughs> yeah that is so fancy looking <laughs> like i wouldn't even have anywhere fancy enough to wear that to. <laughs> All right, this one is mostly hand spun by me, and it's a woven shawl, like a triangle shawl with fringe. Did you have a, like a loom or a weave? Or yeah, something? Did this did was this made stuff? on a tri loom. It's literally a giant wooden triangle with little nails all around it, and there's this process called continuous strand weaving that you just learn how to do on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do anyway and it's not that hard once you figure out the gist of it and so I you can use the fun thing about it is you can mix lots of different thicknesses of yarn and it just all makes it makes this plaid pattern all by itself because of the math that the loom does naturally and so it's really easy and looks really cool in the end this is really cool looking because you can see like there's some um, thin thin yarns there's a you know like a little bit thicker and then there's like some bulky yarn not too bulky but a little you know bulker bulkier than the thin thin yarn that is so cool mixing all the different weights of yarn together and it's also a mix of different fibers it has quite a bit of llama in it and a lot of wool and then it has a little bit of angora in this pinkish stripe <coughs> Oh, well, that's very pretty. That's beautiful. You did a great job on Thank that. You. <laughs> okay, this is a woven bucket hat. 
that I, I wove on my big floor loom that I'll probably show you in a second. And the floor loom, you can make a very long, like many, many yards length of fabric. Um, and again, I, I wove it with lots of uh, kind of like bulky, super textured hand spun yarn. I, I made some yarn that has like little scraps of yarn pieces in it, which I can show when we look at the drum carter later. But it just makes the most textured yarn you could imagine and one of a kind and then you can create fabric out of it and then when you have fabric you can sew things with it <laughs> so that's the bucket hat and that, is, that just blows my mind <laughs> i it's just like go to hobby huge... lobby or michael's and buy yarn yeah <laughs> it's this huge rabbit hole like one thing is connected to another thing and this is another thing i made on the floor loom uh kitchen towels just cotton, made with cotton yarn. Um, this looks like you bought it at Walmart. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Do you see this? <laughs> that looks like it was bought from a store. The floor looms really fun. And things are still woven the same today. They just are on machines. But it's the same. And it's healed on the process. back all the way around. I swear this looks like you bought it at Target or something. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. It's really fun to, you do like a huge, I think this was seven yards long, and then you cut it up when it's done into your little towels. So you can give a couple to, I gave a couple to people for Christmas. And how long does it take you to do something like that? Well, that one took far too long. It, that, that project got put in timeout many times mm -hmm. <laughs> because this yarn was very, it tangled really easily. And so when I was threading the loom, it took me months of like work on it and then take a break, work on it. Usually though, if the yarn doesn't become a complete disaster getting tangled, um, weaving's pretty fast, although it takes almost as much time to thread the loom as it does to weave the fabric. So <laughs> you have to enjoy that part as well or it's not worth it. <laughs> oh, wow. hmm. But I'm, it depends on how long of a thing you make and, and if the yarn is bulky then it's gonna grow faster and so I don't know how to answer how long it takes, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Depends on how much time you spend on it. <laughs> yeah. And being a busy homeschool mom. Yeah. I imagine. I am busy. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean I just can't believe all these different pieces here. Are just amazing looking. Thank you. <laughs> I have a knitting thing that's in that basket bag. I forgot to bring that over. This is my knitting project. I'm a very slow knitter, but I've been well, working on this for a year, and it's color work, which is partly why it's so slow. But the grayish brownish is hand spun, and then the green is just bought from Joann's. So I'm almost done. <laughs> wow. So you can mix hand spun with store bought yarn too. If you match the the weights, if mm -hmm. they need to be matched for your knitting or crocheting. So you want to tell us about your website? Sure. Um, my business is called Willow Oak Farm and Fiber, and that's because I have a lot of willow oak trees. <laughs> and um, it the website is Willow Oak farmandfiber.square.site um, So we'll, we'll put a link to that in the description yeah. box below um, and you're on Facebook Facebook and Instagram Okay, we'll leave links to that in the description box below So on your website, now what do you sell on your website? On my website I sell um, blended bats which is a thing that hand spinners love to buy It's like a it's like this big and if you imagine quilt batting it's kind of that sort of thickness and like a fluffy sheet of fiber but it's not polyester quilt batting it's like wool and llama and angora and all different colors and I blend them together and then spinners buy that and they can spin it into yarn and they even have different options like they can choose to spin it in many different ways so each step of the 
process. You have so many choices you can make to make it unique to you or to get a different result. But that's the main thing that I sell is those bats and then just plain Angora fiber from my rabbits. If anybody wants to spin just 100% Angora yarn or use that Angora to blend, to make their own bats if they have the equipment for that. And I also sell, for people who aren't spinners, I do sell the Drop Spindle Beginner Kits, which comes with a drop spindle and four ounces of wool. It's cleaned and ready to spin. And if you buy it from me and email me or message me, I will send you links to my favorite beginner YouTube videos to help you learn. So this four ounces of that, <clears throat> how much yarn does that produce? Um, uh, it will... A lot of the like hanks of yarn you can buy are about four ounces. So mm -hmm. it's like one skein or hank. But as far as yardage goes, it depends on how thick or thin you spin it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I also sell earrings and tassels made out of hand spun yarn. Okay, so these are some of my products that I sell. Um, these are my earrings and these are um, these ones are made out of Acadian brown cotton. I love to use local fibers. That's the other great thing with spinning is you can get local homegrown fibers. So this is Acadian brown cotton, which is a naturally brown heirloom cotton grown by the Cajuns in Louisiana for hundreds of years. This is 100% Angora from my rabbits. Can I feel that? Mm-hmm. It's super soft. It's really delicate. Oh my gosh. That is so soft. And then these are wool. And they, these have been dip dyed in indigo, which is a natural dye. And these were just dyed before I spun them in the indigo. So they're blue from indigo. And then I've got tassels, which are just, you just hang them on like a cabinet knob or the back of a chair or a picture frame corner or your rear view mirror whatever you want they're just there to be fun like a charm yeah and they're also I've got wool this one's wool and silk alpaca and then more of that cotton and then back here I've got hand woven zipper pouches which I unfortunately don't have on my website yet, but if they don't sell out over the summer craft shows, I will be putting them on my website. And they're just like all the so kinds of So you made the fiber. woven material and then yeah. just sewed it into... And like the blue one here is hand spun. It's the same as that hat, the bucket hat. Look at that back. The Very fiber. textured. That is just so cool. But these two are just store-bought yarns. Okay, so these, like, like, tell us kind of your prices. Like, what are these go oh, for? These are, this is my first time making these zipper bags. So they are $25 to $30. These flat ones are $25. And the ones that have, like, the little flat bottom are $30. And the earrings are $20, except the dip-dyed ones are $25. And the tassels, I believe, are also $20. And again, they're all, like, hand-spun. <laughs> they are really nice. And I just love this texture here. The look of that. Very nice work. The other thing I sell on my website is these bats. And this is one It's kind of gotten moved around, so it's a little bedraggled looking. But this is a bat. It's like a rectangle of fiber, and it has layers of different types of fiber and different colors. No, so the coloring, where does that come from that you dye? Uh, natural dye, almost always. Sometimes I use things that other people have just dyed with acid dyes. Mm -hmm. um, so these are what they look like when you buy them. They're all rolled up, all nice and tidy, and... These are just some of the colors that I have right now. And this is the kit. It doesn't come with the basket, but you get some wool that's in 
it comes in like this uh, kind of like a snake <laughs> and it's all rolled up and then it comes with the drop spindle mm. and so there's videos on YouTube yeah that that's how I learned that. and I, I have my favorites that really helped me back in the day <laughs> okay this is a lot of my hand spun yarn which I don't typically sell although sometimes I do locally um, if I just have too much but um, it's just I just wanted to show you what those bats look like when they're spun like this orange brown one is this bat oh cool so you kind of you look at the bat and you kind of have to imagine the colors kind of like more compressed if that makes sense and that's what your yarn will look like. Although you can spin it in different thicknesses and that will also affect it a little bit. And this pink one, this pink crazy one, is this. Because this what? bat actually has quite a bit of brown and gray in it. It's just kind of hidden from the top. And so it makes this kind of dusty pink yarn. Ooh. And you can do fun things like um, my friend dyed a, like a rope of fiber. It's called a braid because they braid it up. But she, it's like one long piece of wool, and she dyed she dyed it in a gradient. So it started out as this pink color, pinkish color, and then it went to yellow, and then it went to blue. So I decided to spin it the same way. So this skein of yarn goes from one color to the next color to the next color and that's it like it's one big gradient in one skin now what do these hanks uh, usually go for um the thinner the yarn the higher the price because it's more time to spin that many yards mm -hmm. and also the type of fiber will make it more or less expensive wool is kind of on the lower end but things like angora or silk or llama or the more exotic fibers will make it go way, way up. So let's see. For example, some of these do have price tags. Okay. So, okay. This is... No, that does not have a price tag. <laughs> now I have one. Okay. This is 50% llama, 50% wool. And it's 166 yards, it's worsted weight, and it is $46. And then this is a bulky yarn, so it's only 74 yards, but it has a lot of llama and angora in it. And it's also naturally dyed. This one is just natural, like the color from the animal. Mm -hmm. So this one is $38. Even though it's like half as many yards, it's still almost the same price because it's got the luxury fibers in it. And then, I don't know if I, oh, this is, <laughs> this is one of my most expensive ones. This is half Suri Llama oh. and half Angora. It's the softest thing you've ever felt in your life. <laughs> yes, that is super soft. It's just pure luxury fibers and it's also a lot of yards. 236 yards and it is $99. Wow, <laughs> that is so soft. And part of the reason that I learned how to do this, honestly, is because I can't afford to just buy this yarn. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but there are people who can, and they love it. Yes, it's very nice. Like that Angora yarn, what would you typically make with like that white hand this, you just showed? I've been trying to think of the perfect project. I mean, it would have to be a special project yeah. for that. I think I want to weave like a some kind of a neck scarf thing with this. Because I do have a lot of yarn, so I should be able to weave something. And it's really delicate, so I think weaving will make it more durable than knitting would. But I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to commit with such special yarn. <laughs> it is very, very soft. And that is what the beret was made with? That um, it was really similar. It was just 100% Angora, which is... I've got a little ball of it in here. Somewhere. 
Oh, this one's fine. I should have this one too. Can't find it. There it is. This okay, is just all anymore. Anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It is so soft, though. This is mohair, like that cobweb shawl. I was attempting to hand spin a single ply mohair, and mohair is curly. It's from a curly haired goat, the Angora goat. I was just going to say, I really don't really know what mohair is. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a long, it's like a goat with long, luscious curls. <laughs> hmm. And it gets sheared, and you can spin. You can brush it out so it's not all curly looking in your yarn, and it's just, it's going to be slightly fuzzy looking, like my shawl. But I, I spun this one so it would still be a little curly, and I've got another one that did the same way. It's just got little curls in it. But, and that gives it such texture, though. Right? Yeah. This is going to be like a fuzzy, textured whatever when I, whenever I make something. <laughs> So mohair is also really fun. So this is my spinning wheel. Uh, this spinning wheel is not really an antique per se. It's from the 1970s and it's from the Ashford company in New Zealand. They still make spinning wheels today, but I got mine used when I went up to Minnesota to visit my brother. Like um, if you live more north, you can find them used somewhat frequently, and I, that's a really good idea because they are really expensive. <laughs> but if you have the money and you can't find one, you can totally buy them new still from the Ashford Company. Um, there's also uh, Schacht, which makes them in Colorado, and uh, Maja Croft and Kromsky. There's several companies. Um, and there's different styles too. There's like modern styles and there's more traditional looking styles like this one. But my foot is moving the treadle up and down, which powers the wheel, kind of like a treadle sewing machine or a bicycle. And then my hands are controlling the thickness of the yarn by pulling apart this fluff in my hand. So I just, I can go whatever speed I want to twist it faster or slower and then I move my hands to pull apart and also when I'm moving forward like this it's getting wrapped around this bobbin which is not being twisted anymore it's just like sitting there and so my goal is to fill this up so that's what it is and it's very relaxing you can just sit here and do this for hours while listening to a podcast or watching YouTube or movies. It also has a really soothing kind of clacky sound. <laughs> so how long does it take to make a like a hank of yarn? Like one of these regular size hanks of yarn? Um, if I'm doing bulky like I am now. I'm trying to match that other dusty pink bulky yarn. It'll probably only take me a couple hours, two or three hours. But if it's a very thin, fine yarn, or if I'm trying to be very, very careful and meticulous about getting the yarn even with no lumpy parts, it's, it can take many, many hours. So sometimes I just like to spin something fun that I don't have to worry about a lot, like this. This is going to be a bulky, super textured yarn. I don't have to worry about thick and thin. I'm just trying for like an overall thickness, average thickness. Um, but other times, if I have a project I want to make and I need a specific weight of yarn, then I'm going to spend a lot more care and attention at this part, trying to make sure it's consistent all the way through. Because if your yarn's not consistent, your project, when it's like knitted or crocheted, it's going to look bad. <laughs> your, your gauge is going to be way off. And like different gauges in different parts of your project. 
Yeah, some yarn does come that way. Like, um, is it roving yarn? Yeah, I've seen roving yarn before. That will be different um, thicknesses throughout the... Oh, like thick and thin yarn? Yeah. Yeah, you can buy yarn like that. And it can, like, if it's consistent, like, as a whole, then your project will look really cool. But if it's, like, super thin at the beginning of this game and then super puffy and fat at the end of this game, that's going to look weird. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's what you want, though. Like, you can do whatever you want with spinning. You can make whatever yarn you want. Some people like to be really meticulous and try and perfect things, and other people just want to have fun and make whatever happens, like just let the fiber do what it wants. I guess it would depend on your project. Mm -hmm. There are people who just spin, and they don't even crochet or knit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a whole hobby in and of itself. But I like to spin with the idea of what I'm going to make. I don't always have an idea, but I at least have an idea of what kind of yarn I want. So this is the one you're trying to match mm -hmm. here? So right now this yarn is really tight, and it's a single ply, and we're trying to make it bulky but and two ply but you can test it by folding the yarn in half that you've just spun and just letting it relax and then you can see if it's what you want okay. it gets pretty good i might need to go a little thicker but you can test it anytime you want to make sure you're staying on track with your goal I just, that does look very relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's just mesmerizing. <laughs> hey friends, I wanted to pop on here real quick and tell you that if you check the description box right below this video, I am going to leave links to Willow Oak Farm and Fibers um, Facebook page, their... Instagram and also her shop so check out those links I did get me these Angora earrings let me just show y'all this is so soft you cannot even imagine how soft this is so when I'm wearing these I'm probably gonna be petting them <laughs> they are just really really soft and I just wanted something to um, have that soft you know so anyway, check those links out below. I hope you're enjoying this field trip as much as I am. It is so very interesting to me. So let's go finish the field trip. Okay, this is my floor loom. Um, it's really big. <laughs> they do make smaller ones. This is just what I was able to find used. Um, but I like it. It makes wide pieces of fabric. But you can make any width up to your maximum width. Um, and it's not currently threaded at the moment because I just finished making something and it does take, like for me it takes days to get this thing threaded. <laughs> um, but it has this thing that you beat back and forth and so I'm gonna, like I would have yarn here that's threaded through my loom and I would have a shuttle in my hand that I would throw and it just kind of glides through and then I throw it the other way, and in between each throw, I would beat the yarn down in my weaving. And it also has treadles, which raise up these shafts. And these are where the pattern is created. Um, so the you follow a pattern, um, and now this one is stuck. <laughs> That's okay. But you follow a pattern from like a book or the internet, or you make one yourself. Um, and they have like computer programs that can help you make your own patterns. I'm not there yet, but maybe someday. But it, the way that you thread 
each of these little things on this shaft, there's like, I don't know, 100 for each of the four shafts, will determine your pattern. And also, the order that you lift them will change your pattern as well. So when you lift it, what is it actually doing? Well, it's hard to explain when it's not, when I can't show you. Right. But if you lift a shaft, which one is stuck? There we go. I need to like give this thing some TLC. But if you lift one up, what it does is the threads that are in front of me right here will the ones that are lifted up will just go like that. And that space in between the threads is what I'm gonna pass the shuttle through, oh. which has another a separate piece of yarn. And I pass it through, close it, beat it. Open the next one, pass it through, close it, and beat it. And there's just so many variations of ways you can make different patterns. But that's that's the basics. And as you go, you roll it. Um, like when you when you fill this up, then you're gonna roll it on this beam thing down here, and it can hold like a big roll of fabric as you go. And when you're when you thread it, it's threaded on the it's not. Yeah, when you thread it, it's wound on this back beam. And so it's going to unwind from here, pass through here, get woven, and then get wound up as fabric down here. Wow. So that's the basics. <laughs> that's such a cool process. I mean, it sounds so complicated, though. Yeah, I, I, I was a little nervous to try it because it does sound really complicated, and I'd heard it takes so long to get it threaded. But honestly... It's, I think it's a little bit less complicated than knitting because the machine is doing all the complicated stuff. All you're doing is going back and forth. So it's just a learn, just a learning to do it. Learning how to thread it is a little, and follow a pattern that is a little more complicated. But if you just want to do a basic pattern, it's not that hard. Once you get it threaded, it's very relaxing. You don't have to think very much. That is so interesting. Uh, this is my studio. It's a little small and cluttered, but I like being able to see everything. Otherwise, I kind of forget what I have. <laughs> I have the same problem. Yeah. So this is fiber, um, especially like colors that I use when I make those blended bats. I kind of have them sorted kind of by color. I also have a lot of fabric. This is some of my naturally dyed fabric. I'm trying to work towards making a naturally dyed quilt. Um, I've got a bunch of old quilts that I cut up. They're like totally, they're like ruined quilts, but I sometimes I cut them up and make stuff. Um, this is some of my yarn. I usually have all that hand spun yarn in here too. Um, and yeah, just lots of fiber and more fabric. And then over here is my drum carter. This is what I use to make the bats. And I will show you that in a second when we're done with the tour. But I like get whatever mixture of things I want in the bat all weighed out and ready to blend. And I've got lots of fiber art books and things. <laughs> and um, this is a project bag that I made with that woven hand spun fabric. I really, really like it. I've got my sewing machine inserter. And this is, I love this is packaging for my website. These are natural dyes and dye things. Um, bats that I display in my live videos that are for sale. A lot of my tools. Um, there's more fiber. <laughs> and uh, these are some wall hangings I just made that I'm going to sell at local craft shows. Um, yeah. I think that's it. How often do you do craft shows? Um, just in the sun, like the spring and the fall is when we have them locally. Um, I don't do a ton, um, but I try to do like the ones, this is my second year, so this year I'm doing the ones that made me more money and not doing the ones that people didn't really show up for. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. 
it's it's always a gamble with local crab shows. You never know what it's going to be like, or if it's going to rain, or learn from experience. So. Yeah, but it is really fun to just sit outside and spin on my spinning wheel and talk to people. And I bet people just stop to see because yeah, it's very very they, interesting. They, so like most people have never seen one. So a lot of people have no idea what I'm doing, and it's just really fun. <laughs> Okay, this is my drum carter. I'm just going to show you a little bit of how I make a bat. Um, mine's electric, but they also have hand crank ones. And you can put fiber down here, or you can just put it up here. And I usually put it up here, and you just kind of like dab it on however you want. And it just grabs it on. And once I get this gray stuff on, I'm going to add a different color. Is there like bristles on that? Mm -hmm. It's like kind of like a dog slicker brush. So you can add colors in stripes or you can add it in like little blobs, whatever you feel like doing. And this is all wool so far. Some people like their bats very well blended. Other people like theirs less blended. Because that's going to affect the end result of your, with your yarn. The more blended means like you're just literally mixing the colors to form a completely new color. And the less blended means you're going to have more like little pops of color in your yarn, multiple colors. <clears throat> I usually do the latter, but sometimes I do blend things really, really well if, if I want a very smooth yarn or a very smooth color that doesn't have a lot of variation. Okay, this is silk. And I, it's, it comes in like a little square, but I cut it up, and it's really fun to add little pieces. And these will be like those pops of color in your yarn. And I also sometimes use yarn scraps, because the loom actually makes a lot of waste yarn. I'm going to slow it down. I'm just kind of like push it in there. And this is what I did for that blue fabric that I made the, the knitting project bag and the bucket hat and the zipper pouches. I used a lot of yarn scraps. And I also used this brush to kind of pack it in. Make sure it's all staying on. So the yarn makes really fun texture in your finishing product. This is also from those zipper pouches that have that dark pink. You can just add those and then cover it up with a layer of wool. And you just keep doing it in layers. A little of one type, a little of the next type. So how thick do you make a layer? Um, I try to do it pretty thin because it's a little, I think it's easier to spin with multiple thin layers rather than like three really fat layers. But you can do it however you want. There's lots of YouTube videos about drum carters and the different things you can do with them. So the result, the end result of this, after it's spun, it's going to be a muted dusty pink with pops of pink, darker pink, and uh, these browns and blues and things. I think it's going to be really pretty. That is so cool. And I see a rabbit speaking in the window. Yep. <laughs> you see what they're doing with their hands. No, you said this is wolves. Yeah, this is pretty much all wool. I think that dark pink 
I've got the silk, and then the dark pink yarn is cotton and cashmere. So it's got a little bit of everything in it. No Angora. <laughs> my, this is one of my Angora rabbits. This one's a little baby. They're actually very large rabbits. Like, with their fluff and everything, they look humongous. But so that's a baby? a baby? She's old enough to not be with her mama anymore, just barely. She is 12 weeks old. Hmm. Um, and she is a mixed breed Angora. She's half giant Angora and half German satin cross. So there are multiple Angora rabbit breeds. There's giant, German, French, English, satin. I think that's it. <laughs> um, and I have giants and mixed breeds of German satin. And, but they all have long hair. Their textures are slightly different for each breed, but not, not super different. Um, so she's a girl, and um, she's got this lovely fiber that I'm going to shear next week. And she will really appreciate that because it is hot. Um, and so how do you do that? Do you just... It's like you get little dog grooming clippers and you just give them a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> and um, some of them... Oh, here's another one. She's a different color. So this is called black. The color is based on their face color. Because um, when she was a babe, a really little baby, she was completely black. But as their fur grows longer, the pigment gets like stretched out and it makes it paler. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but so after you shear it, will the color um, start back black again or no? It's it sort of is. It depends on when I cut it. Like you can see, there's a little bit of black right there but it'll probably mostly look white because I'm not going to cut it all the way to the skin yeah um, but she is I think she's called a fawn colored or she might be a tort I'm not an expert in rabbit colors <laughs> but yeah they're all going to get sheared next week and these are all my girls I have um, I have nine babies at the moment and I have eight adults if I include the one that belongs to my daughter. <laughs> and they're usually a very calm rabbit breed. They've been domesticated for a very long time. Um, so they're pretty easy to handle. Sometimes you get one that's not as easy to handle. But they're pretty good. They, um, if you're thinking about getting a pet, just be aware that they are very high maintenance pets. Um, they require a lot of grooming time, and they require climate control, like they cannot really live in the heat of the summer. Like So you, you was telling me they're home, they're they have an air conditioner okay. <laughs> in their bunny barn. And this is just where they get to like, when the weather is right, they can free roam in here. And they love coming out here. So how many do you have all together, you said? I've got eight adults and nine babies. Oh, wow. So what will you do with the babies? You just raise them also? Um, I raise them. I, try, I keep them for replacements because animals die, you know. And, um, and I try to sell them if I can find the right people who are aware of what they're getting into. And then the rest of them, unfortunately, do go to freezer camp. <laughs> How old would this fawn colored be? She's. These are all the same. Okay. Same Actually, no. Two different litters, but the same time. I had a black litter and then a litter with other colors. On it.
antique flax wheel. I'm not sure how old it is. It's very broken, but it looks cool. And the other thing next to it on that cedar chest is a skein winder, I think is what it's called. Oh. And it was used to wind yarn either off of a spinning wheel or from something else into a skein. And it even has a little counting, yard counting mechanism that's also broken. But wow. it's the, it's from the song that goes, a penny for a spool of thread, a penny for a needle. That's the way, I forget the rest, <laughs> pop goes the weasel. Oh, It wow. makes a popping sound when really? it hits a certain number of yards. At least that's what I heard. Huh. But it does not work. <laughs> well, it makes for great decor. Yes. <laughs> Very lovely. Well, thank you for having us over today and explaining the whole process of raising rabbits to taking their fur and making yarn, spinning it and making yarn. That is just so cool. I love the whole idea of that, the whole process. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Well, I appreciate you letting us come over and make a video. So, guys, we will see you all later in the next video. And remember, it's a beautiful day to crochet.